The adventure continues this week on Ford Outfitters. Uh, we're here in Miami uh, trying to get uh, Conway into some great fishing. God, this is awesome. Look at how slick glass is. Yeah. I hope uh, my angler is up to par with the situations. Oh, through it. No way. Okay, let's get another one. We don't always win. Yeah, got it. Nice, nice. That's a big redfish. And boom, we hit it. Four expert sportsmen on a mission to find North America's top hunting and fishing outfitters. The ones that create the unforgettable adventures and bring us that trophy of a lifetime. Totally stoked. Each week, one member of our dream team hits the road in an F-Series truck in a search of the hardest working men and women in the outdoors. This is The Outfitters. Just a few miles south of Miami, away from most of the hustle and bustle of the big city, marks the home of Martin Carranza. Born in Argentina to a generation of fishermen, Martin is the rare type of outfitter who can treat his line of work as more than just a job. It's an addiction and a lifestyle to which he's known no other. I guide full time. Like this month, um, I think I had two days off. That's it. My office is a really cool place. You know, my office is uh, the water, and that's also my playground, so it's fantastic. You know, you can have a very clean boat, always. You know, just like going to the doctor and he has a messy practice. Then you start wondering when the same thing with guides. You gotta have a, have a clean boat, <laughs> everything well organized. Burning the candle at both ends is all in a day's work. And after prepping all of his gear down to the finest detail, Martin returns home not to rest up for a pre-dawn departure, but to spend a few more hours crafting unique fly patterns to give his clients one more added advantage. I have fished in many different rivers, uh, oceans, estuaries, and for different kinds of fish. I like to experiment and use all my 45 years of expertise to give my clients the best fishing experience possible. It wouldn't be fishing if everything went as planned. A little rain and thunder have muddied up the start to our adventure. But as they say in Florida, Everything, including the weather, is never quite as it seems. Beautiful city, Miami. Conway is meeting Martine at the marina, and no act of God or otherwise will keep these two old friends off the water. Martine. Hey, brother. How are you? Good to see, see you, man. Good to see you. I love the weather in Miami. I'm... <laughs> This is gonna be over in a couple of hours, so yeah. we just get ready and get the hell out of it and it. go fishing. Okay, hook the boat up and... Yeah, absolutely. Walk. Fishing the Everglades is unreal. I mean, I live in Miami, which is a huge urban environment, surrounded by water, of course, but you see all these tall buildings, financial district, residential houses, and, and on driving to the Everglades, it's like getting into the old world. It's like going back to the past, into the old Florida. 60 miles south of Miami sits a great biological wonder of the earth, the Florida Everglades. Sawgrass marshes, cypress swamps, and dense mangroves. Once described as a river of grass, this two million acre wetland ecosystem is home to an extraordinary array of exotic wildlife. The water is legendary for its snook, tarpon, and sharks, but nothing can compare to the excitement of spot fishing the elusive tailing redfish. Up next on Ford Outfitters, Martin and Conway get a first crack at a tailing redfish, but nothing ever comes this easy. You see him? That's it. I got him, I got him, I got him. The Outfitters is brought to you by the 2015 Ford Super Duty. The weather is cleared and the road ahead looks picture perfect for fishing on the Everglades. Only the laws of space and time now stand in the way. Martin, we're almost, we're almost at the landing. Look, I mean, we're 17 miles out. I mean, it took no time to get down here. And we're covering, what, 80 miles? 80 miles. The other thing is, you know, I don't even know the boat's back there. What boat? 
It's still back there, actually. Oh, I mean, yeah? Well, yeah. thank God. That's a very expensive boat. I'm very happy about it. And I think with this Super Duty, man, I mean, I can tell my big boat, and I wouldn't even notice that it's there, just like this one. And that boat is like five, 6,000 pounds. <laughs> Today's destination is Sandy Point, known amongst insiders as one of the great red fishing grounds in the Everglades. Hey, Martin, let's go fishing. Good day. Yes, it is. Vámonos. Well, we're going to be using this super technical beaver tail flat skiff. We're going to need fly rods in the 8 and the 12 weights, 8 weights for the general fishing and 12 weights for the sharks and tarpon. And we were going to need uh, spinning rods in the 12 to 25 pound class. It's an hour run from Flamingo Bay to the south flat of Sandy Point, where bait collects on this tide and in turn attracts redfish. I think we have arrived. I'm going to pull from here on so All we right. spoke the fish. Well, we just got here, and the idea for the day would be to put my uh, dear friend uh, Conway, Xavier Bowman, into some nice redfish. That would be the goal. Conditions are great. I'm expecting to see tailing redfish. That's what I'm expecting to see, because these, these waters are full of tailing redfish. They're famous for tailing redfish, the Everglades, and the water's clear, a lot of turtle grass, a lot of great current. There is a tail at one o'clock, a couple of tails. You see those bushes? I hadn't even made a practice cast, but there are tailing reds everywhere. We got up on a number of fish, and I just could not convert the cast. The fish were, were spooky. My cast was not great. These are big fish. These are wise fish, and uh, you know, there's uh, a reason why they go to be old. So that was uh, that was tough. And then I, I thought, okay, you know, let's get some action, uh, get some fish. So we moved a couple hundred yards to a canal where I know it has a lot of fish on an outgoing tide. Digging deep into his bag of tricks, Martin pulls out a curiously named yet dangerously effective popper rig, the Cajun Thunder. It's a heck of a It's a, a rig. very interesting rig. Make it pop on the water. That's a nice trout. You make a lot of noise with that popper, and uh, it attracts fish from a distance, especially uh, trout. Big trout. That is massive. Cajun thunder, baby. Look at this gator trout. So far, for me as a captain and a guide in this area, it was the biggest uh, trout on my boat. I was very proud of that moment, you know, and that he caught it with me. So put back. Beautiful. Yes, sir. That's a beautiful release. The skunk's off the boat, but the redfish continue to elude Martine and Conway. Channeling local knowledge, the outfitter chases shifting tides to another favorite haunt. And find toothy predators, lots of them. You got it. Got it. Set the hook, set the hook. But while Conway wrestles with a brutish foe, the sharks aren't the only aggressive competitors to contend with as tensions run high. Well, we've done our scouting. We've got a great camping location picked out. Now we've got to grab some rocks for the fire range. We've got to clear some ground, and then we're going to haul the gear over and set up camp. It's a great opportunity to test out the all-new 2015 Ford F-150. The built tough field test continues. Oh, man, I was being careful. I didn't want to scratch up the new truck. Oh, man, this thing's made out of a high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy. I think it's the toughest F-150 yet. All right, let's roll. Well, we got to get through here. If you want to grab the chainsaw, I'll grab the straps. Cool. Nice job. Yeah. Should give us enough room right there. To see the full built tough field test, go to the FordOutfitters.com.
In the Florida Everglades, adventure angler Conway Bowman and outfitter Martin Carranza are engaged in a chess match. You know, this cut is probably 300 yards. It goes into another cut that, in, you know, and then it goes to the Gulf, right? So we fish from basically uh, the end of this cut, and uh, we started moving out towards the bigger channel, and that's where we are right now, waiting for a tidal change just to get, uh, you know, our fishing going again. I think, uh, you know, we have a little bit more ripple water right now, which, uh, uh, hides us better from uh, the fish. We have uh, the sun way up, we have a very low tide here, and we expect to see uh, some really night redfish for, you know, probably a couple of hours. 11 o'clock, you see that nervous water, 11. So Martin and I got to the spot, conditions looked great, had good current, clear water, and we were actually looking for redfish right off the bat, but that soon changed because uh, the ties were perfect enough for sharks. Not many people come down to the Everglades to fish sharks, but sharks are a part of my core. That's what I love to catch. When I see a shark on the flats, that's it. I'm gonna put a, a juicy piece of, uh, of snapper okay. to tease them. With bait ready, chum bag deployed, and a go-to fly, the shark tease, a ruse Conway knows all too well, commences. Oh, gee, we know he likes that. Okay, let's get another one. There he comes, there he comes, there he comes. Yeah. You got it, got it. Set the hook, set the hook. Oh. <laughs> that guy <laughs> totally exploded on that. <laughs> Look, he's coming right back into the jump foot. Here he is. Oh, he threw it. No way. Okay, let's get another one. Gee. There is another one coming. At that point, we had sharks all over the place. He's on the fly. He didn't want it. He turned away from it. Then all of a sudden, we don't have any more bait? No. Okay, that's it. No more bait. The chum ran out, and the fish split. They basically went off the flat. On deck with a resourceful outfitter, you're never out of the game. I just hooked a uh, catfish, we chopped him up, and then started chunking that, and that got those fish going again. I got smoke. This massive shark heads for the deep, and the only recourse is to give chase. But will the leader hold? Oh, he's off. I think what happened, as he was moving away, his tail hit the monofilament and cut it like that. God damn. How ridiculous is that, going for a, a, a 200 pound shark on something like that? Well, bro, you did a great job. The team decides to head in, lick their wounds, and save their strength for another day of pursuing wary redfish. As physically taxing as saltwater angling can be, the mental toll can be even more exhausting. An outfitter always adheres to the belief that today is the day. Martin navigates to the densely wooded canal area of Lake Ingram. We're gonna start covering as much of the coastline as we can. You with a fly, I with a jig head and a shrimp, and uh, see if we can move some tarpon, snook, redfish. Anything that swims. We went to this canal where I knew that there were gonna be some tarpon uh, rolling. I'm gonna try this area for, you know, like 100 yards or so. Okay. If nothing happens, we're gonna move, you know, that's the way. We saw these huge silver flashes, and I thought at first there were, it was a school of tarpon because they were so silver bright. If you don't get a couple of fish and a couple of drifts, we move. That's the way to fish here. Make some noise. Yeah. You know, pop, 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 the drift. Pop, 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 the drift. Typically when you come to the Keys or you come to the Everglades, you come to Florida, if you're saltwater fly fishing, you expect to have wind, you expect to have difficult conditions. That goes with the territory when you're fishing in salt water, whether it's a fly or whether it's conventional. So we work hard, 
We tried hard to get into them. We saw a couple rolling, but they were two, you know, you know one here, another one 300 yards away, so it was really difficult to find them. Between tough fishing and dwindling elbow room, the boys move on. We decided, okay, let's check one more spot, went to this channel, and all of a sudden, we see some tarpon rolling. So I just, you know, made a turn, and I tried to get Conway into this fish. So suddenly, you know, this guy came running and yelling, and... We're more than 300 yards away on the GPS. The tensions are high down here when fishing's tough. Yeah, I understand, but we are 300 yards away, okay? 300 yards on the, on the GPS, 300 yards. Enter for your chance to win the official Ride of the Outfitters, the all-new 2015 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost, or win one of four perfect weekend adventures designed by the Outfitters hosts. The bite is off in the Florida Everglades, and outfitter Martin Carranza and angler Conway Bowman are feeling the heat. The tensions are high down here when fishing's tough. A lot of the guys down here, they're making a living, and that living is catching fish. And when everybody's having a tough day... We're more than 300 yards away on the GPS. If you're fishing three or four days, you're going to have one day that's going to be a tough day. And today was one of those days, just a tough day all the way around. You know, he might have been polling all morning, just trying to put a client into some fish, and, uh, but you know, I understand his frustration, so. Make some noise. You know, that's when we decided, okay, man, just, let's call it. A new day brings renewed hope, and the outfitter remains calm, cool, and collected. Well, we're almost there. I mean, let's, uh, let's get to that ramp. And let's go catch some fish. And it's, I really I, want to get some red. I am sure that with the power we have on this track and the speed, we can get it really quickly, but we have to respect the speed limit from way. So just calm down. <laughs> this morning's tides warn another mission to the southern edge of Sandy Key. But the sea is dead calm and water tepid, and the fish have slid off the flat. The heat was bearing down on us. It was hot. We were tired because we put in a lot of time on the water. We haven't seen one in a little while. Fishy, 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 fishy. But the goal was still to get a redfish to the boat. You know, we, we were running out of time, running out of tide. And honestly, at that point, I was thinking that we may not reach our goal. With the clock ticking, Martine makes a late game gamble to make a run to catch a fleeting tide flooring the throttle between Sandy Key and Carl Ross Keys. Okay, we're gonna take advantage of this high tide. Uh, we're expecting the tide to push fast, and we're gonna be away from the wind. It's gonna be slick, so uh, we're gonna have a, a pretty good visibility. I actually pass this spot all the time, and, uh, and it doesn't work all the time, you know? It has to be a super strong incoming tide and uh, a very warm day which is today, and uh, boom, the fish were there, you know, just like predicted. It's full of fish. You see them all over the place? Conway, Conway, you gotta cast like that and let it swing in yeah. front of them, okay? Yeah. My first two casts weren't great because I didn't take into account the current. They're moving again to the right, one o'clock, cast to the right, let it swing in. Yeah. So Martin said, make your cast up current, let it swing. And that's what I did. And get low, get low, because every time you move. And uh, I just had a really great feeling. Yeah, got it. Nice, nice. That's a big redfish. Nice, man. Nice, red. nice. I've never seen redfish set up like this. I mean, that is really unbelievable. I mean, that is really cool. That fish made two or three incredible runs, a hard fight, got me on my reel. Look at that, cool color. I think um, we nailed it, you know? Yeah. And then I thought, man, I think I'm gonna just fulfill my promise for a change. Check this out, man. Yeah. Check this baby out. One thing that really stuck out, what a cool looking fish. All yours. Was how lightly colored this redfish was. And I think it's because they live over this white sandy bottom. So that in itself was pretty cool to, to you know, bring that redfish to hand, look at that, and, and look at what a beautiful light color it was. And it was a 26 inch you know, redfish, which is a quality, quality redfish. So right then, I said, you know what? 
we reached our goal. Martin, this is like one of the most beautiful redfish I've ever caught. At that moment, I'm totally stoked, and there are more redfish around. So I said, well, you know, let, let's keep catching some redfish. Let's catch as many as we can, you know, before we run out of tide. Martin said, we've got just one more spot to check out, okay? And I'm like, okay, great. So we're moving across the flat to a little island. Boom, you know, right off the bat, we were there, and uh, suddenly, you know, this school of redfish right in crystal clear water, just laying in the sand, just waiting for us. And I made two or three casts, you know, a good cast, another cast. He's, he's on your fly, he's on your fly, he's on your fly. And then on my third cast, set the hook, yes! <laughs> and my motivation for being a guide is, first of all, uh, I think it's the best job in the world. I mean, you are out there every day, enjoying nature. There we go, there we go. Redfish numero dos. Si, senor. And so here I am on number two redfish, and it had two spots on it, which was kind of ironic, second fish, two spots. I said to myself, this is the way to end the day. Look at this school of redfish. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. But the thing with Conway was uh, I always wanted him to come over and fish with me. And, uh, you know, as an outfitter, it was very difficult for me because, uh, you know, I have this uh, guide mentality where I wanted him to catch fish and fish and fish and as many species as possible. And the bigger, the better. Oh. <laughs> El gordo. El gordo. Uh, you know, I think I accomplished that. You know, I put Conway into a lot of fish. I hope he does the same for me when I get to San Diego. Nothing comes easy in fishing, you know. Oh. You gotta work hard and then it just makes it that much better. Absolutely. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That was cool. <laughs> Next week on The Outfitters, it's Huntley's turn and he's taking the Ford Super Duty West to Montana's Bull Mountains to set his sights on a spring gobbler. We're here to hunt turkeys in the Muscle Shell River Valley. It's late May, end of season, perfect time.